If an engine fails after V1, the crew must continue with the takeoff. V1. At V1, the captain removes their hand from the thrust levers. Pilot flying uses rudder to maintain runway centerline. At VR, pilot monitoring calls Rotate. Rotate at a slower rate than normal to a target pitch attitude of 12 to 13 degrees. The initial climb attitude should be adjusted to maintain a minimum speed of V2 and a positive climb, then follow the flight directors. Pilot flying maintains the rudder input. With a positive rate of climb on the altimeter, the pilot monitoring raises the landing gear. Positive rate. Gear up. Gear up. Caution. Do not state which engine has failed or further diagnose the problem at this point. Pilot monitoring cancels any master warning or caution. Pilot monitoring can now advise air traffic control of the engine malfunction and the crew's intentions. VPREP 01, engine failure. Stand by. Above 400 feet above ground level. Pilot flying can use rudder trim to reduce handling workload. Apply trim until any pressure felt in the rudder pedals has been reduced to a comfortable level. The rudder trim input should be enough to center the control wheel. With the aircraft in trim, the autopilot can be engaged. Navigation. If the engine out SID does not require a turn, fly straight ahead. Select heading select. Failure identification. My control and communications. Restate malfunction. Pilots monitoring reviews all systems to determine the failure type. This includes any master caution alerts, all engine indications and the fire panel. The crew will need to identify if the failure is 1. Engine fire, severe damage or separation or 2. Engine failure, flame out as there are separate memory items and QRH NNC procedures. Engine fire indications. An engine fire warning is indicated by a master fire warning light, an overheat detection master caution light, fire warning bell, red engine fire switch, and an engine overheat light. Severe damage indications. Abnormal engine indications. Unusual or heavy airframe vibration. Engine separation indications. Engine parameters blank. Engine failure or flame out indications. Low or decelerating N1 and N2. Decreasing EGT with an engine fail alert and other unusual parameters. Once the crew have positively identified the failure, the pilot flying calls for memory items. Memory items for engine fire, severe damage, or separation. Pilot flying disengages the auto throttle. Caution. Operation of thrust levers, start levers, and fire switches must be confirmed by both pilots. Pilot flying will close the thrust lever of the affected engine. Thrust lever, engine number one. Confirm close. Confirmed. Closed. Pilot monitoring will move the start lever of the affected engine to cut off. Start lever, engine number one. Confirm cut off. Confirmed. Cut off. Pilot monitoring will pull the engine fire switch of the affected engine. Engine fire switch number one. Confirm pull. Confirmed. Pull. Pulling the switch disables the thrust reverser of the affected engine. It also closes the engine bleed air, hydraulic and fuel valves. And trips the generator. It also arms one discharge squib on each fire extinguisher bottle located in the main wheel well. and deactivates the low pressure light for the affected engine-driven hydraulic pump. If the engine fire switch or engine overheat light stays on, the pilot monitoring will rotate the switch to the stop and hold for one second. This discharges the squib of the related fire extinguisher into the affected engine. 
the bottle discharge lights will go on once the associated fire extinguisher is discharged into the affected engine. If after 30 seconds the engine fire switch or engine overheat light stays on, rotate the switch to the other stop and hold for one second. This discharges the remaining fire extinguisher into the affected engine. The bottle discharge light will go on once the associated fire extinguisher is discharged into the affected engine. The engine fire switch light will go out if the temperature sensed by the fire detection loops falls below a certain threshold, indicating that the fire may have been extinguished. Actions for the engine failure flame out. There are no memory items. The crew should perform the QRH NNC at an appropriate time. Acceleration and flap retraction. Boeing recommends an MFRA of 1000 feet AFE as indicated by the top of the white bar on the altitude tape. At MFRA, select the speed bug to the up position. Bug up. Bug up. The flight directors command a pitch attitude which will give a rate of climb between 0 to 200 feet per minute. With the speed above V2 and accelerating, retract the flaps on schedule. Flap 1. Speed checked. Flap 1. Flaps up. Speed checked. Flap up. Flaps up, no lights. Level change. When level change is pressed, the MCP selected speed changes to the current speed. Set MCT. Pilot monitoring selects continuous on the FMC N1 limit page, which will show the green N1 reference bug on the upper display unit. Pilot monitoring advances thrust of the operative engine to the green N1 reference bug. MCT set. The crew should check that the speed is set to the up bug, as this speed should be flown until above the MSA. Continue climb until reaching the Air Traffic Control Altitude, or MSA. When the aircraft flight path is stable, the crew can now perform the QRH NNC for the relevant failure. Engine fire, severe damage or separation. The QRH NNC, engine fire or engine severe damage or separation, initially directs the crew to confirm that all memory items were actioned correctly above 400 feet above ground level. If high airframe vibration occurs and continues after the engine is shut down, adjust speed and or altitude to reach a level that reduces it. Close the isolation valve. This separates the left and right pneumatic sources. Turn the pack switch of the affected engine off. APU bleed air switch off. Start the APU. When the APU is running, select the APU generator switch of the affected side to on. Balance the fuel if needed. Set TCAS to TA only. Isolation valve switch to auto. This ensures bleed air is available to both wings if wing anti-ice is needed. If return to the departure airport is not possible, plan to land at the nearest suitable airport. Do not use FMC fuel predictions. The QRH provides performance data for one engine inoperative flight. The QRH directs the crew to the one engine inoperative landing checklist. When the QRH NNC is complete, perform the normal after takeoff checklist. Engine failure flame out. The crew refer to the QRH NNC engine failure or shutdown. Pilot flying will disengage the auto throttle. Caution: Operation of thrust levers and start levers must be confirmed by both pilots. Pilot flying will close the thrust lever of the affected engine. Thrust lever, engine number one. Confirm close. Confirmed. Closed. Pilot monitoring will move the start lever of the affected engine to cut off. Start lever, engine number one. Confirm cut off. Confirmed. Cut off. 
Pilot monitoring turns the pack switch of the affected side to off. Start the APU. When the APU is running, select the APU generator switch of the affected side to on. Balance the fuel if needed. Set TCAS to TA only. Check the isolation valve switch is in auto. This ensures bleed air is available to both wings if wing anti-ice is needed. An in-flight restart may be attempted if there is N1 rotation on the affected engine and no abnormal airframe vibration. If a start attempt is unsuccessful, the QRH directs the crew to the one engine inoperative landing checklist. If return to the departure airport is not possible, plan to land at the nearest suitable airport. Do not use FMC fuel predictions. The QRH provides performance data for one engine inoperative flight. One engine inoperative turn after takeoff. Some departures require a non-standard turn after takeoff following an engine failure. It is important to engage heading select above 400 feet above ground level. Caution, do not use LNAV. Consider adjusting bank angle selector to 15 degrees. If the engine out SID requires a turn with no published speed, this will be flown with a maximum bank angle of 15 degrees until the turn is complete. The pilot flying should follow the flight directors in pitch, which command a speed of between V2 and V2 plus 20. Above MFRA, bug up, accelerate and retract the flaps on schedule. If a speed restriction is published, the pilot flying must ensure they fly it accurately to achieve the required separation from terrain. When the turn has been completed and above MFRA, bug up and retract flaps.